Hello, welcome to Anatomy Daha series. I am Dr. Abdul Hamid. Today's topic is Applied Anatomy of the Coronary Arteries. It covers dominant artery, anastomosis, occlusions, infarcts, and refer pain. Free medical education. Dominant coronary artery. What does that mean? Dominant means controlling influence, major controlling. In this case, the coronary artery which provides major blood supply to the heart. The posterior interventricular artery, posterior right descending PRD is the key factor. From which coronary artery the posterior interventricular artery PRD arise? In about 80% of the hearts, the posterior interventricular artery arises from the posterior segment of the right coronary artery. Then it is right dominant. Look here in this diagram. This is posterior interventricular artery coming from the right coronary artery. This same thing, posterior interventricular artery coming from the right coronary artery extending up to here. Dominant coronary artery continuation. Look here, this is posterior interventricular artery, also known as right posterior de descending artery. This is the key factor to decide whether right dominant or left dominant. As we have said, if this one comes from the right coronary artery, it is right dominant. If this one comes from the left coronary artery, we call left dominant. See here, this is circumflex artery, which comes from left coronary artery. Sometimes right posterior descending this artery comes from the circumflex artery. Sometimes it comes from left anterior descending artery, which comes around from apex and form this artery. So in both cases, this artery is the terminal branch of the left coronary artery. In such case, that is in about 10% of the cases, we call this as left dominant. In about 10 to 15% of the hearts, terminal branch of both coronary arteries, right and left, run parallel in the posterior interventricular groove called balance pattern. So some that means in 10 to 15 percent of the cases, terminal branches of both coronary artery, right coronary artery and left coronary artery run parallel in this groove called balance pattern and in that case we call co-dominant. Knowledge of these variations is important in the interpretation of the coronary angiogram. Anastomosis between the coronary arteries. Anastomosis in Greek means connection between the vessels. Coronary arteries are functionally N arteries without sufficient overlap but anatomically they are not. Branches of the right and left coronary arteries anastomose internally to each other at arterial level and externally with the thoracic arteries. They occur both in health and disease. Internal anastomosis. First anastomosis is between the right Corners branch of right coronary artery and left corners branch of left coronary artery or left anterior descending LAD artery. This looks like a necklace in front of the infundibulum of the right ventricles and thus called annulus of Vucens. Second anastomosis is between the right coronary artery and the circumflex artery at just left of the crust in the inferior, that is the diaphragmatic surface of the heart. 
third anastomosis is between the left anterior descending LAD and right posterior descending RPD at the inferior diaphragmatic surface of the heart. Fourth anastomosis is between the atrial branches of the posterior segments of the right coronary artery and circumflex artery. The fifth one is between the right coronary artery and circumflex artery through the AV nodal and Google's arteries. Anastomosis between branches of the right and left coronary arteries. We have already listed out in the earlier slides. Now we are going to show you in the diagram. This is the right coronary arteries, the first segment. This is the second segment of the right coronary artery going along the posterior atrioventricular groove. And this is its branch, right posterior descending artery, descending along the posterior interventricular groove. This is left coronary trunk, which divides into two. This is left anterior descending artery coming along the anterior interventricular sulcus or groove, then winds around here, goes upwards along the posterior interventricular groove. This is the second branch from the left coronary trunk, that is circumflex artery, goes towards the left to reach to the left margin of the heart, then goes backwards coming along the posterior atrioventricular groove. Now we are going to talk about the anastomosis. Very first anastomosis is the conus branches. Conus branches are the arteries or branches going to the cone of the this infundibulum part of the heart. So conus branches are coming from right coronary artery RCA and left anterior descending LAD at the root of the infundibulum. So they are coming, one coming from the right coronary artery, another one coming from the LAD, left anterior descending artery. They will anastomose here. This is the very first one forming like a lace, necklace here. Okay. Now next one is Second one is right coronary artery, RCA, and circumflex artery at the back of the heart, just left of the crust. You can see here, this is the second segment of the right coronary artery, goes to the left beyond the crust, and after that, it will anastomose with the circumflex branch from the left coronary artery around here. This is very common, around in 60%. Third one is left anterior descending artery and right posterior descending artery. That is LAD coming from the left coronary artery comes around here and as most with the right posterior descending artery, RPD coming from the right coronary artery. This is the third one. Then fourth and fifth are not mentioned here, not shown in this diagram. They are right, they are atrial branches of the posterior segments of right coronary artery and circumflex arteries. That means atrial branches, the branches coming from the right coronary artery and circumflex artery, that is the atrial branches, they will anastomosis. Another one is, again, branches coming from the right coronary artery and circumflex artery through the atrioventricular nodal artery or called Google's artery. They will anastomose there. They are not shown in this diagram. Clinical highlights. Left coronary artery, which arises from the left posterior aortic sinus, may be trapped between the aorta behind and pulmonary trunk in front of it. Left 
circumflex artery is closely related to the mitral valve. In mitral surgery, therefore, this artery is likely to be injured. Coronary arteries are more prone to arteriosclerosis, thickening and loss of elasticity of the arterial walls. Please do not confuse with arthrosclerosis, that is stiffening or hardening of the joints. This is arteriosclerosis and this is arthrosclerosis. In old age, the coronary arteries are liable to have arteriosclerosis, leading to the narrowing of the lumen. This diminishes the myocardial blood supply, followed by angina, ischemia, and myocardial infarction, MI. However, in slow process of arteriosclerosis, there is a gradual development of anastomosis between the arterioles and new channels are open. There is lesser chance of myocardial infarction. In abrupt Okay, in abrupt occlusions, there is not. Thus, the time factor in occlusions is all very important. Common sites of occlusions. Let's see the diagram first. This is the right coronary artery, first segment. This is the second segment, and it is its main branch, right posterior descending artery. This is left coronary trunk. Its main branches are, this is left anterior descending artery, goes around the apex and goes backwards. And this is the circumflex branch, which goes around to the back at the left margin of the heart. Okay. Occlusion means blocking up. The three most common sites of coronary artery, occlusion and the percentage of involving each artery are the first one anterior interventricular that is left anterior descending LAD, a branch of left coronary artery. This is the one LAD, the, the branch of the left coronary artery is the maximum 40 to 50 percent blockage is here. So usually known as widow maker. The second artery is the right coronary artery. This is the one maybe from the first segment, maybe at the second segment, maybe at the right posterior descending branch. It will be about 30 to 40 percent. And the third is circumflex artery here maybe first segments or second segments of the circumflex artery is about 15 to 20 percent. Therefore, a total occlusion of the branches of the left coronary artery is about 55 to 70 percent. Blood supply of the wall of the heart. Let's go to revision. This is fibrous pericardium. This is parietal layer of serous pericardium. This is visceral layer of serous pericardium, also known as epicardium. This is the myocardium layer. Outermost part of the myocardium is deep to the epicardium, thus called sub-epicardial layer. This is the innermost layer, endocardium. Just deep to the endocardium is subendocardial layer, that is deepest part of the myocardium. Coronary artery and its branches are in the subepicardial layer, that is the outermost part of the myocardium. These coronary arteries and branches will supply the blood to the epicardium and almost entire thickness of the myocardium. Another set is 
by diffusion of blood coming from the chamber of the heart, coming through the endocardial layer and reach to the subendocardial layer. Only these two parts is supplied by direct blood from the chamber by diffusion and microcirculation. So this is the subendocardial layer is the layer which is farthest away from the coronary blood supply and farthest away from the blood supply coming from the chamber of the heart. Therefore, when there is lack of blood supply, this layer, subendocardial layer, is the first to be affected and occurs ischemia in this layer. Clinical features of myocardial infarction, MI. Number one, sensation of pressure, crushing, sinking, and pain in the chest that lasts longer than 30 minutes. Nausea or vomiting, sweating, shortness of breath, and tachycardia, increased heart rate. Chest pain radiates to the medial side of the left arm forearm and hand. Sometimes it may be referred to the jaw or the neck. Slow or gradual blocking of the coronary arteries is less dangerous than sudden blockage. Narrowing of less than 70% rarely show collateralization. Referred pain what is referred pain? Pain felt in the part other than that at which it was produced. That means pathology is at one site, it's pain at another site. The heart is insensitive to touch and pressure, cut and temperature that is cold and heat. However, in ischemia, there is decreased in blood supply with oxygen deficiency. The metabolic products accumulate at the site of ischemia, which stimulate the pain nerve endings in the myocardium. The radiation of referred pain depends upon the site of myocardial infarction and nerve supply. As stated earlier, the obstruction in the left anterior descending LED is 40 to 50 percent. The circumflex branch, which is also come from left coronary artery, is 15 to 20 percent. And right coronary artery is about 30 to 40 percent. That is, total percentage of ischemia in the territory of the left coronary artery is about 55 to 70 percent, more common than that of right coronary obstructions. Referred pain continuation. If the occlusion is at the more common artery, the left coronary, the ischemic areas of the heart will be anterior and the left surfaces. Pain sensation from these areas of the heart, A, is carried by sympathetic nerve fibers B to first thoracic to fourth thoracic segments of the spinal cord C. A is the ischemic area of the heart. This is the sympathetic fibers taking to the thoracic, first thoracic to fourth thoracic segments of the spinal cord. These spinal cord segments also received somatic general sensation from first to fourth thoracic dermatomal areas, especially from the left side of the body, D. These are the area. Therefore, pain of the myocardial infarction in this case is commonly radiated to those dermatomal areas. They are substernal, root of the neck, left pectoral region, left shoulder, and medial aspect of the left upper limb. Referred pain, 
continuation. If the occlusion is at the right coronary artery, the ischemic areas of the heart will be posterior, that is the diaphragmatic, and the right surfaces of the heart, A, around here. It often gives rise to discomfort in the epigastrium. The ischemic pain from this area of the heart is carried by sympathetic nerve fibers B to 7th to 9th thoracic spinal cord segments C. These segments also received somatic, that is general sensation from 7th to 9th dermatomal areas, that is the epigastric area D. Therefore, pain of myocardial ischemia from the inferior surface of the heart, the territory of the right coronary artery is commonly radiated to the epigastrium. The end, illustrated and presented by Dr. Abdul Hamid Abdul Rashid, Free Medical Education. For the benefit of future users, the author welcomes short comments and suggestions from the readers. Thank you.